All right, guys, thanks for joining me today. I just wanted to give you a couple of quick thoughts on this new Casio G-Shock that I have right here. This is, of course, the AW500E-1E, and this is the revival or reprise of the original AW500, the first analog G-Shock, and I've been wearing this for a couple weeks now, and I definitely have some thoughts on this. It's really a fun watch to wear. So I originally picked up the AWM500D, which I absolutely love. This watch is fantastic. I wear it quite often. I really can't say enough about this one. Check out the video in the link uh, posted above for some more information and my video review, but definitely give this one a shot. So the AW500E is a very similar watch, uh, but it definitely has some unique characteristics, and you can see right off the bat that it's a bit larger than the stainless steel version. So this one right here comes in at 47.4 millimeters wide and 55.2 millimeters tall uh, with a thickness of 14.7 millimeters and of course it's super lightweight it's only 58 grams and you can also see that the case is bigger and the dial itself is smaller than the stainless steel version but it's definitely a good watch in its own right and right off the bat I noticed that it's just incredibly lightweight like I said it's 58 grams and it really kind of wears like a bracelet so here let me throw this on the wrist for a minute and here it is on my 6.75 inch wrist and you can definitely see that it's kind of a taller watch lug to lug I kind of held up on getting it because a watch at 55 millimeters tall for me is just a bit too big but you know it really feels good it's not heavy at all, and I, I think the circular motif kind of makes it feel smaller on the wrist. But to me, this watch kind of wears like a bracelet. It's really lightweight, and just the kind of feel that it has on your wrist, it's almost like a bracelet that has a watch on it as opposed to a watch with a bracelet. And I kind of like that a lot. It's a very unique feel. So it's really fun to wear. It's easy to grab and go. You know, I don't feel like I'm going to bump it around or wreck it like I am with that stainless steel version. So that's one point, uh, you know, it's very lightweight. Another thing with this watch is that the band is actually pretty long on this one. Um, I trimmed it up a little when I got it just because it was kind of sticking out on the other side of my wrist. Um, but these bands are actually really easy to trim. And if you do happen to mess it up, I think this bracelet is only about 17 or $18 online. So what I did is I just took an X-Acto knife and I cut off about a half an inch off the end. And then I filed it down a little with some fine grit sandpaper. And then to finally give it that shine and make it look normal, you just kind of rub it on a pair of jeans for a little bit. And it comes out looking totally smooth and fits my wrist a little better. So yeah, the strap is a bit long on this one, but it's just such a nice watch. I just decided to go ahead and trim it down so I can fully enjoy it. And another thing I like about this watch is that the case really does feel like a solid piece of resin. You're not kind of getting that sandwiching look and feel that you get with some of Casio's cheaper watches. But yeah, this is definitely a big chunk of resin and it feels super solid. And like I said, on the wrist, I can barely tell that you're wearing it, but the case is pretty sturdy. It feels like it's got kind of that matte, it's not grippy. It's got a kind of a matte smooth finish that feels really good. And, you know, you can see on the back here that it's got the four bright red buttons uh, that are lined up horizontally, which is kind of a unique characteristic to this watch lineup, which kind of makes them hidden from view from overhead. But here you've got the hand adjustment button and the mode adjustment button over here. And on this side, you have the another button to adjust the watch, and then you have the start and stop button for the stopwatch. So yeah, I'm really liking the feel of this watch. And I've had it on my wrist quite often. And in addition to that solid resin case, you also have a really unique dial on this watch. It kind of has this three-dimensional effect where you can see that there's a chapter ring in there with military time. And the hands themselves are just kind of floating right above that dial. And of course, they have that unique shape to them. But yeah, it just kind of has that deep 3D look, which I really enjoy. I think it looks great on G-Shock watches. Another thing about this watch I did not know is that it has tons of loom on it. I originally thought that there's just loom on the tips of the hands, which there are, but there's also loom around the 15, 30, 45, and top index marker as well, and along all of the other indices. 
So here it is with just a quick charge up from a ultraviolet light. Not incredibly strong, but it definitely does the job. And in addition to that loom, there's also an electroluminescent display for the digital dial at the bottom, which is triggered by the bottom right button. So even if you can't use that loom, you still have a really, really bright light to illuminate the time or day date, which is super nice. Another thing about this watch that mimics the original AW500 is that the buttons are a little odd. So you definitely have this mode button down here on the bottom left, and that'll take you from day date to timekeeping mode. And then from there you can set an alarm. There's no hourly chime on this. And then there is a stopwatch, which has one one hundredths of a second. And the stopwatch is actually controlled by the top right button. So you press that to start the stopwatch. You press it again to stop it. And then to zero it out, you just hold down the button. And in about a second, it'll reset back to zero for you. And there is no timer on this watch, but it does have dual time. Not world time, just dual time, which means that you can set the time to pretty much anything you want just by holding down the top right button. And then it brings you right back into date mode. In timekeeping mode, you just hold down the top right button until it says adjust. And then the mode button will actually zero out the seconds where the top right hand button will cycle through to the hours, minutes, 12 or 24 hour time, and then back to timekeeping mode. And without a doubt, the most quirky thing about this watch is that the analog hands are set independently from the time. So they do not match up, so you have to use this top left hand button over here in order to move the hands around the dial. And man, it is incredibly slow. So the minute hand ticks forward every 20 seconds. So I've seen a couple other reviews on this watch, and the guys just refuse to hit this button because it takes forever for the hands to go around the dial, but I'm gonna suck it up and do it for you guys just to show you. So if you see the minute hand there, every time I press the top left hand button, the minute hand goes forward by 20 seconds. So if I wanted to match uh, the time right now, which is 1250, I actually have to hold down the button and wait until that completely cycles around the dial back to 1250 and good lord, that's going to take a long time. But I'm going to sit here and do it for you just to show you how painful it is. Obviously, I'll speed up the video. But just keep in mind that the sped up version is not the speed that the hands go. They don't speed up after you hold on the button for a while. It's actually really, really slow. So yeah, it did take about a full two minutes for the hands to make it all around the dial. So here I am, I'm pretty close. I'm gonna go to 12.55. So this is kind of the tricky part. You have to line up the hands. And the minute hands actually do match up to the digital seconds. So every 20 seconds, that minute hand will tick forward. So right there, I've set the minute hand to exactly 12.55. And then what I usually do is wait until the minute rolls around. So in five seconds, that hand should tick forward by one notch. There you go. And then I'm going to go ahead and press the button two more times to line it up to exactly 1256. So yeah, it's kind of a pain in the butt. Um, but, you know, that's how the original watch worked. And I guess they wanted to keep that uh, in this reprise version, but that's fine. And then finally here, you can see the minute hand tick over right there at 20 seconds. So there you go. That's how you set the analog hands. So yeah, the size of this watch might be just a little big for smaller wrists, but like I said, it fits really well. Since it's a G-Shock, this watch is, of course, water-resistant to 200 meters. It's got a 7-year battery over the 3-year battery life of the original version. I think it's got a CR2016 battery in there. But again, it's 58 grams, 52.2 millimeters lug-to-lug, 47.7 millimeters wide, but it's just a really fun, solid watch to wear. So you can bang it around and get it beat up and don't have to worry about it. So let's check this out on my wrist one more time while we wrap this up. Again, this is the Casio G-Shock AW500E-1E. I think you can pick this up for around 150 bucks. They're kind of a little tough to find now just because they're so popular. But yeah, I definitely recommend this watch after wearing it and enjoying it for a couple weeks. So please leave a like here on this video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe to my channel for more Casio reviews. 
And once again, thanks for watching Casio, and we'll catch you later. Thanks.